Hello everybody and welcome to March's edition of the Chris DeLay Failure Show. This is the monthly series of videos that uh, Chris and myself, Mark, are making, looking at game ideas that we have abandoned, viciously abandoned, yeah. ruthlessly, in the snow, ruthlessly. ruthlessly, we've driven, we've driven out to the middle of the forest yeah. And we've told the game that we're going to have a nice day, a nice picnic, yeah. right? And we've said, we've said, sit down here, I'll be back in a minute. And then we've driven off. Oh, that's cold. That's cold. That's what we've done. Yeah. That's and what we've done. And they're, they're current, I, those games are currently sat there in the forest, slowly realising that their parents don't love them anymore. That no one's coming back, that yeah, no one's coming for them. No one's coming for them. That is what this is all about. But on that's the on the plus side... Kind of a sad thought. Got, yeah, go on. Yes. yes. Little yeah. <laughs> A little bit of a tragic image to open. Yeah, we'll open start on it. a low note and hopefully it'll be all uphill from here. <laughs> um, so we talk about a game idea and then if you want to, you can play that game idea by heading over to introversion.co.uk forward slash prototypes. You give us some money, whatever you can afford, as long as it's above $5, we are happy. And whatever you give us, we then give to War Child, which is a fantastic charity that helps children affected by war. So um, we're not making any money from our abandoned children, but real children are. <laughs> that actually came, that came together Good in one, the end, didn't I it? I love that connection. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't expecting that. Right, now, the other thing that I want to say is... Um, you know, we need to manipulate the algorithms. So please like and subscribe. And um, Chris has yeah. guaranteed that for every like we get, he's going to give an additional 10 quid to, um, to War Child. <laughs> I've done like. what? <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Wow, that's... With your likes and subscribes. That sounds, like one, those, that sounds is... like one of those open-ended transactions that sounds very risky to me. <laughs> That's right. That's right. You don't want to go down that route. Um, so this is our fourth video. We've done three mm. so far. The first two, they're all on YouTube. Um, oh, the other thing I should say is that if you do want to play one of the prototypes, we give you access to all of the prototypes. I hope that makes sense. Mm. So however much you pay, uh, as, long, as long as it's five dollars, you're going to get access to all of them. We haven't said how many there are, but there are quite a few. We, we've got a few more to, to make. The first couple were all about space games, space building games. And last month's was all about designing and building a computer. Mm -hmm. Had a look at the comments in, in that one, did you did you make? Of course I had a look in the comments. I love reading the comments. Yeah, that one was a good what one. You, right, and there were a I noticed that there were a couple comments in there of, of games that that were already out there. Yeah. Not necessarily games, yeah. but there are, kind of, there are some games out there like that. And there, there are some games out there that really do really do go down the rabbit hole of really deep electronic simulation stuff, you know? And they, they do find an audience. I definitely think... I, there was definitely some people there flying the flag in that one when they're saying, if you ever finish this game, I would absolutely play it, you know? Yeah, we get that, don't we? we you know, there's, mm -hmm. there's always a couple of people in there who, who, who are really positive, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. they're, they're, really, they're really up sometimes for Sometimes more, it. sometimes more. I think Spacebots probably had the most fans so far, you know? I don't yeah. know, maybe we should do a Twitter yeah. question about it. You know, ask just ask what people's favourite one has been so far, or most the one that they enjoyed yeah. seeing or playing the most. Because it's because it's it's just guesswork from us, isn't it? it people yeah. sometimes yeah. assume that we know what we're doing, that we have some sort of amazing creative path laid out in front of us. And I think by the time we're done with the failure class, we, we should have dispelled that myth. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't got a clue we what we're doing. We don't have a clue. We just don't have a clue what we're doing. Exactly. We just try stuff. Um, I think it stands to reason that probably, like probably each each prototype that we release is going to have some people that like it, and some will have more that like it than others, won't they? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we do we do enjoy the comments because Chris Chris particularly likes drawing my attention to ones that say Mark's wrong. Yeah, you know, you, you well, there's no that. shortage of them, is there? Let's be honest. Right? Because I mean, there's, because there's, <laughs> there's plenty of people <laughs> saying, "Oh look." Mark Morris has completely fucking missed the point again. <laughs> yeah. Nobody that's that's, quite, that's that. quite a consistent uh, comment, that one, I found. <laughs> and nobody ever says that about you. No. But that's because you never go out on a limb. You never say anything controversial. Is that what it is? You, you, yeah, you keep all your real comments for, you know, midnight when you're really drunk. <laughs> and then you lean in and you tell me what you really think. Yeah, well, I think that's... Tell you. And there's, there's a reason for that. <laughs> if you lot knew how woke Crystal A is... <laughs> 
Yeah, let's not go there. I think that. I think that. I mean, I think that. Probably. I mean, you. Yeah, I mean, we've never. We've never really. We've never said that this was like a creative partnership, have we? It's not really a creative partnership. You don't design the games with me, and you don't sit down with me and play the games with me. In the early phases, it's mostly just me, and so. And it, it's never been the case that. Um, you were that into games in the early phase because you've said even in these very videos you've said that you don't really like to see the really rough versions you don't like to see the rushes you don't like to see it when it's not fully formed because you can't really imagine what it's going to be like you know so just people are yeah. picking up on that that we're looking at prototypes that i've personally abandoned because i don't think they're good enough and then and then it's not really a surprise that you wouldn't find them good enough either because yeah. I've, I've shown you games that ended up being fully released products and you still didn't think they were good enough or particularly like them. Yeah, you know? yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And and I think that um, I would be the first to admit that in in some ways my influence actually can be damaging in those early in those early days. You, you know, I what I think I'm good at is um, sometimes, you know, certain blind spots that you you had you've had in the past you know where mm. things you've not quite you not quite got something right and i sort of understood what you were trying to do with with that and that you you'd missed you know and yeah, could yeah. help kind of line it up or you know things that you'd not thought were particularly important i remember remember a multi winner tutorial i think it was for the xbox version and just nobody and half the people couldn't play it you know when yeah. when i i ran a trial that you you didn't even bother to come to because trials in those days <laughs> I'm not why would I want a to fucking see, trial. why would I care <laughs> what any players think that's yeah. what you were like oh, in those, those days. were the glory days weren't they do you, do you remember yeah. I'm like mate I'm going to get some people to play this game just just yeah. like to get some fresh eyes you and listen you were like, to me carefully from... Morris I don't give one <laughs> flying fuck what the average gamer thinks <laughs> this is how the game's going to be <laughs> yeah that's it now you can take that's your it. fucking trial and you can that's fucking right. shove it up your ass but well, then you That's came right. back with the results, right? And 99 <laughs> yeah. out of 100 players had gotten stuck 15 minutes it wasn't into that the game. Bad, but it was high. It was like yeah. 80% had walked yeah. out, 80% had abandoned the game. And I was yeah. like, mate. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, shit. Damn it, he's right. But yeah. But, but I, definitely, I definitely think that um, didn't there's we an issue here. Didn't we then take that, didn't we take that game then to PC Gamer shortly afterwards? Remember, we took, we took the game and showed it to PC Gamer, and then they said the same thing. Do you remember yeah. that? Yeah, you believe them. Yeah, that was it. That was when it finally hit home. It's like, okay, so now all the journalists who are going to review the game are also telling me the same fault. Maybe there's something in it after all. Damn it, I hate mm -hmm. it when you're right. I really do. Luckily, well, yeah, but maybe that doesn't happen. We're enough. here. Yeah. And now, you know, now because I'm saying, you know, oh, it's shit, mate. <laughs> you're yeah. going, oh, well. Now the tables I'll are try, turned. <laughs> I'll try to see what else then, mate. <laughs> yeah. I think somehow... <laughs> Somehow I can't quite put my finger on it, but I have a feeling it wouldn't work if either one of us wasn't there, you know? Like, I mean, I'm certain it wouldn't work if I wasn't here, but I mean, if... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I mean, if both of us weren't here and both of us weren't like this, I have a feeling we would have gotten... We would, if we'd both been like me, we'd still be making subversion, you know? And we would never have escaped that death loop. And if yeah. we were both like you, we would be making... I don't know what the fuck we'd be making. Uplink 16 DLC Part yeah. 1 the future <laughs> and it would be tied in with the movie or something and probably actually shit both of those arrangements probably would have been more successful than we are now damn it we need to clone one of us yeah, i don't know about that i don't know about that yeah but there's something I, about that yeah, weird partnership isn't there? There's something about this weird I mean, partnership I was, that works yeah. i was well yeah i mean i was talking to cliff cliff harris um positech uh gratuitous mm. space battles and democracy you know and i was chatting to him the other day and um you know, we were talking about this very thing that that you know, I'm I'm in awe of Cliff just because he's able to do every yeah. part of like like the game being a video game developer yeah. on his own and very well. You know, so contracting, finance, um, flying around the world, development. He he just does all of it himself. Yeah, yeah. And one of the things that does the design, does the programming, awesome. does the outsourcing design, where necessary. Yeah, does it absolutely. All? Yeah. He's just he's just this like incredible. The other really talent. frustrating thing is that he's just damn it, he be, he's just there before us, right? As well, like we like to think of ourselves as being there dead early in the indie revolution, right? And he yeah, was, but he's already been him. he'd already been going for years by that point. 
actually. Yeah, but nobody knows about him. So as long as we don't talk about him too much, <laughs> we'll still keep our place in the history books. <laughs> but <laughs> I think a fair few <laughs> democracy players might agree with, disagree with you on that one. Well, that's true. That's true. But, yeah. you know, he also knows when to keep a, a franchise alive. Yeah. You know, that's the other thing. You, you know, like he, <laughs> he's, he knows to work on yeah. democracy for and not try and, and create some kind of new, weird, off the wall, <laughs> cave scanning game right. that no one's going to play listen to me Morris we might have made prison architect but fuck you we're moving on to something completely different now <laughs> yeah that's it so you want another architect game do you sorry <laughs> yeah you're saying that um, basically we should be more like Cliff no I'm not saying that at all I'm just I'm just saying that part of this process you know this this public therapy that you and I are going through yeah. right is is to is to look at all of these aspects and angles right yeah yeah and and, and I think that in the early days you had that strong drive that really was like insanely strong you know like literally I don't I don't give a fuck what anybody else you know any other player says this is this is just right you know proper prima donna yeah. designer and, and bit of a and negative those, turn then, mate. Right? I prefer no, 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 auteur, I, don't think so. I think, is the term I prefer. There's a, there's a place for them. There's a place for them, right? <laughs> yeah. But, um, you know, now it's kind of swung too far the other way. Yeah. And just because of how we're set up and, you know, just, just I don't know, I think COVID's playing a role as well. There isn't anybody else nurturing those early ideas, I know, you, I know. you know. I used, to say have, in, I used to have a ton of self-confidence, definitely on the games in the early days. And that's how we got to crazy shit like Darwinia, right? That just doesn't make any sense, but we still made it. Yeah. And I feel it's gone completely the other way now. I feel like I've just lost most of that confidence now. It's very difficult for me now to assess a game and be confident that we should carry on with it, you know? Confident that that's a winning idea and that we should just push forward with it. Um, I don't really know why that's happened because we've we've had quite a few successes behind us now, you know, and you would think that would make you more confident, but somehow it hasn't. I think you're right. I think COVID is playing a part, though. You know, this is a really, really tough time to be trying to create something from nothing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just like the input is switched off, right? Mm. You know, there's there's no there's no input coming in, and even if you know you were going to be a bit more collaborative with a new idea, and and reach out to because there's a whole community of indies. You, mm. you know, there's loads of people and and loads of opportunities to to kind of meet people and talk about new ideas and just bounce things around. But you can't really do that at the moment. You certainly can't do that while you're trying to homeschool your kids. Yeah. You yeah, know? Yeah. And it's it's just, to, so... to be honest, I mean, the thing is that we are, we are treading a fairly well-known path and there are plenty of stories within the indie world of severe burnout mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. from people who've maybe had a successful game or maybe not, you know, but certainly they worked, worked on a game like we worked on Prison Architect for seven years, I think, you know, six or seven years people that have worked on games for that long it's pretty pretty common in the indie world when you've had all that you've had you've taken all that on to yourself um and you've kind of been responsible for it for that length of time and it's finally done and out there and people just sort of crash you know they lose their confidence and they burn out and they feel they feel depressed and they don't feel creative at all they don't they, the last thing they want to do is create new stuff um and i think like i really think that happened to us you know I think that happened yeah. to us in quite a big way. And I think yeah. Scar Somber, you know, is really a game very much about being brutally depressed <laughs> and alone, you know, and stuck and not not being able to do it. Like, to try and read into that, to me, it's very obvious that that game came about because of our mental state and Alistair's yeah. mental state as well. Like Alistair, the audio guy, the guy, the guy behind the sound and music was also like in a really dark, depressed state when we were making Scar Somber. Yeah. But but even with Scanner, you know, which, which I I love Scanner, you know, I think out of out of the weird side of the introversion portfolio, it's it's definitely my favourite. And I was looking at the Scanner website the other day, which was just like brilliant. I did so well on that. <laughs> um, it was even though you know even it was tapping into those things, there was still a really strong creative output with mm. Scanner. Mm. You know, it it wasn't it wasn't. I'm I'm depressed and in a cave and I'm not doing anything. Yeah. It's well I'm gonna I'm you you still at that point have the ability to tap into tap into those emotions and turn that into a finished yeah. product. Systemize now, it, as we like to say as game designers. Yeah. Take the higher yeah. concept and turn it into game mechanics. 
deliver it. And, you know, there were, there are faults with Scanner in the same way that there are faults with every game. You, yeah, you know, yeah. not everything's going to be perfect, but it still got there. You know, it got over the line. Mm. And, um, I, you know, I was really proud of, of what we did with that, actually. I, I think it was small. It was self-contained. Yeah, me but too. Me I, too. I love, I love that that's our sixth game. And I love that that's the game that yeah, we followed yeah. Prison Architect with. You know, <laughs> I love the fact that we followed a massive commercial big game with such an indie arty project like that, you know? Yeah. Um, but but now I kind of feel like we obviously haven't done nothing. Like I mean, we're sat here going through however many prototypes that we've made since. We obviously haven't sat down and done literally nothing. It's It's like somehow the inner confidence that you'd need to take a prototype to a finished game has we've lost touch with that you know and yeah. what we've done instead is we've just shuffled from prototype to prototype and just tried loads of things and probably gotten a little bit obsessed with space logistics or maybe even more abstract than that just like factorio <laughs> Do you yeah, know what I mean, there's some, there's some sort of common thread that runs through a lot of these prototypes, which is some. I think people in the YouTube comments have pointed out that all these games seem to be start by building something tiny and then build slightly bigger things with the tiny thing and then make even bigger things and then exponentially grow, you know. And in that sense, yeah, that mega processor game has that same. That would be a high concept, right? It has that same high concept behind it as Spacebots does. Where you're starting out with little robots and programming them right down at the like the individual lines, and then eventually you're looking at a whole star map and you're looking at whole planets and star systems. You know, there's a common theme there, even though mechanically those two games are quite different. You know. This month's game is called Nanotech. All right. Nanotech. Nanotech. Okay. Oh, no, I have seen this. I have seen this, yeah. You might have seen it, but not very much. Um, no, no. So, what are we looking at here? Um, well, we're looking at a Petri dish. Okay, We're in a lab somewhere, staring through a microphone in a Petri dish. And we're not. We're staring through a microscope. Did I say microphone? We're yeah, you did, but don't worry about it, We're mate. staring through a microscope into a Petri dish, and... Um, this is the game world in which nanotech takes place. Now, this is another of those prototypes where I made some progress, but I didn't quite get as far as I was hoping. There's a few mixed scales and mixed metaphors in the game. But I'll explain the core of the idea. Um, first up, you'll see these little robot fellas, these little nanobots that are running around collecting resources right, on their own. They're just running their own little AI, and they're collecting a little chain of resources. Right, You see in that? Yeah, that's yeah. where I started, and to be honest, even I was getting a bit bored of robots collecting resources at this point, and so I kind of left that stuff, and I started work on. Um, it looks nice, though. It looks nice, you know. Once yeah, it's again, like, they, like they're floating in like a sort of fluid, aren't they? It's like kind of yeah, engine. yeah. Just the way they're they're turning, you know, and bending mm. from when you're zoomed out, you know, does does just a meet. You can look at that immediately and go. This is a petri dish. Yeah, it looks kind of swishy, doesn't it? Like they're in a liquid. Yeah. Well, it's going yeah. to get even better. And these are these these things are sort of our target, right? These are so the idea behind the concept here is that this is like pollution, right? This is like an oil spill or um, something that might COVID have had a natural. A, no, not COVID nineteen. It's not inside a body, but there would have later. Then, I'm sure there would have been a level that was COVID nineteen, but this right. is more like Deepwater Horizon. You know, okay, it's more okay. like a like a disaster as a has occurred in the ocean, and there's just. Yeah, hydrocarbon chains everywhere, you know, like a massive oil slick. And we want to we wanna bioengineer some sort of... I originally thought machine, but then I started to think we want to bioengineer some sort of life form, right? That yeah, we're going to yeah. introduce into this oil slick. And it's just going to kind of eat it all and shit it all out. And then when it shits it out, it will be in a much less environmentally harmful form. You know? Yeah, it'll be it'll be like water and carbon dioxide or something, won't it? Because yeah. it always is. Exactly. So it'll kind of rebind yeah. it with water or something. So I started work... I, I started out with this sort of, like, you can drag things around, right, in this Petri dish. You can move things. Oh, well, that's nice. Yeah, and you can also make new stuff, right? So I can click, and I can just connect things together like this, right, and make a new it's shape. sort of world of gooey. Yeah, a little bit like that. And it is, it's using a similar sort of spring physics-y model, right? So you can kind of see... It starts to look like a thing quite quickly, you know? Yeah, yeah, it does. It starts to take on a bit of a life of its own. And I don't really need to be precise. Like, I think in this game in particular, I was starting to get really bored of 
very precise like grid like worlds you know where yeah, everything's on yeah. a fixed axis and i wanted something that looked a lot more organic you know so the way i see it is i'm I've, i'm kind of bioengineering some sort of gelatinous life form you know this is like a thing going like yeah. you know and it doesn't do yeah, anything yeah. yet it doesn't have a mind of its own but it is kind of alive you know it's sort of a thi- it's alive in the sense that it looks like it might be something that you found in the petri dish you know yeah um and you see in the top left there's a list of things that we can build, right? We can. So I've just been building cells, um, and I can press the number keys, right, to flick between these yeah, different yeah. options. So to make this guy do anything, we need to give him uh, or her, right? We need to give him or her some it, I suppose. It, yeah, uh, it, I suppose. Um, we need to give it until, until you give it some some sex yeah, or organs but cool, even then that it? doesn't that... determine the pro- pronoun that yeah, is very that's cool very true i was just i was just marveling there at the way that it sort of bl- pushed got pushed to one side by that robot yeah. steaming through it's kind of cool um so if i put some we've got these things called attractors right now they're called attractors what they really are, are mouths think of them as mouths right? right so i'm going to make some tendrils out the front like this here's some tendrils right and i'm going to yeah. put i'm going to pause it right so I've paused it now, so the simulation's not running. And I'm going to put some attractors. What was, what was, it, what was it simulating? It was just, it was, oh, it was just oh, those just like robots floating around. And, yeah, yeah, exactly. So if I put some attractors on like that, actually, maybe, maybe some more. All right. so you see already, right, they start being attracted to these poison things, whatever they are, hydrocarbons or whatever, right? So these three are kind of pulling up towards this batch. And this one's so, so hang on, hang on. Are they are they attracted to like the white dots or the no. black dots? So the the em- these empty black things are the attractors, right? And they're attracted yeah. to the black molecules in here. So this is why I was okay. talking about mixed metaphors, right? Originally, I actually thought of this as a hydrocarbon chain. So I thought yeah, of these yeah. as carbon atoms and yeah, these white okay. dots as hydrogen atoms. And so these yeah. are just different forms of crude oil, um, yeah. which is just hydrogen and carbon in a long bindy chain. But the scale yeah. is all wrong, right? If that's a petri okay, dish, okay. then there's no way that's a hydrocarbon. So now I just think yeah, of it as okay. like some sort of <laughs> some sort of horrible poison that you're trying to gobble up, you know? Yeah, you okay, see, okay. But as you watch it, suddenly with those attractors on the front, it starts to look like it's got like a mind of its own, right? Yeah, now, yeah. When yeah. they when they get a hold of a, a one of those poisonous uh, points, they sort of dissolve it, right? And they break apart the bonds that's holding it onto its neighbour. Parts, I'm right? smiling because it just it just looks brilliant. It's neat, isn't it? Right. So you can see that that, that life form I see it yeah. as like a non sentient gobbling life form. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. It no, wants, it yeah, wants yeah. to eat things, um, but it's not really thinking about it particularly. Well, well, this is exactly what you know viruses and proteins and mm-hmm. and things do. You know, you're you're very going to get to the end of my knowledge really quickly. <laughs> but yeah, tell us more. <laughs> yeah, but but this is kind of how you know, like red blood cells and things kind of operate and work, right? They they are attracted to certain, you know, they they they, they there's the, the yeah, geometry, exactly. yeah, the they, shape mm. of the virus is, is quite an important, quite an important sort of thing. Mm. Yeah. So maybe we'll give it some more. Uh, maybe let's give it some. Actually, we don't really need to. So I mean, it'll 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 slowly eat its way through these. To these hydrocarbons and you can start to see it's leaving a little train behind of what i consider to be harmless little molecules you know that have just been yeah, re- yeah. released into the water um, yeah right let's give it some more let's have a little a couple more extensions out here and some uh, bop and bop and uh, bop there we go that's quite cute yeah something like that all right so they all they all exhibit a pull so it'll it'll tend to drift towards where there are the largest collections of edible things right right um, so this is, you know, we've, we've bioengineered a, a little organism. It's kind of cool, isn't it? Um, now, so the, the interesting thing that we can add now is, um, once we're happy that we've got a design that looks like it might be able to do something, we can attach a brain, right? Number six. Now it's not really a brain, right? It's the ability to reproduce. That's, that's okay. the way to think of it. Right? Okay. Right. Right. It's the ability to asexually reproduce. Right. right. So by slowly gobbling up all of these... So we're assuming that it's absorbing some sort of energy from the things that it's gobbling, right? It's breaking apart these bonds chemically. And then as that happens, it's, it's taking energy into its own body. And when it's done that enough, it will asexually reproduce. Um, hopefully we'll witness this in a, in a moment. 
we might need to have some Barry White music playing at this point. <laughs> there we go. Oh yeah. <laughs> so you see, you see how it's broken apart into two identical creatures. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. See that? They're entangled because they both started yeah. out in the same place, but they are now two separate creatures going their own way. It has had children, mate. It's had children. Oh, it's I feel completely like a miracle fucked. as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> well, your life's ruined, mate. Nothing good's ever going to happen to you again. Oh, you've done it again. People just don't learn, do they? So when they start out, when they when they just when they just divide up, they they start out completely on top of each other, you know. But they kind of disentangle after a while. And so these gelatinous blobs will just kind of float around this world and you can i can drag them like this right so you're talking earlier about how, how it's quite nice the way that things respond you know if i just get a hold of them by their head and drag them around they kind of go all over the place it really does have a kind of look of a giant fluid to it doesn't it you know like a bleh, kind of a fluid i i, I yes <laughs> i i mean it, it does look really organic and um mm. And yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the way in which that, I mean, just the reason I was quiet is because it's not just a fluid. It, it's, it's, it has a feel, it just has a real microbiology feel to me. Yeah, it does. It looks like that's what moved me away from the atoms because it was originally going to yeah, be all about yeah. atomic level um, work. It's going to be robots at this scale, but obviously it doesn't make any sense. If that's a carbon and a hydrogen atom, what size is a robot going to be? <laughs> You know, there are yeah, some, no, there are some stuff... rules to physics. But what, so what happened was I ended up doing this and I, and I accidentally made a very organic looking like Petri mm. dish thing, you know. And that was yeah, when I started yeah. thinking, oh, it needs to be much more about organic creatures. It needs to be way more about making organisms, you know, that do the work for you rather than making robots that do the work for you, you know. And I like the fact that they... Because obviously, obviously the intention was that there would be some... There would be some good strategies and bad strategies for how to build your organisms, you know? Like some would be more efficient than others, and there would be kind of predators in here, you know, that would come and destroy them if they didn't operate a certain way. You know what I mean? Mm. I never got to that point. I never got to the point where yeah, where they would fail if, if you designed them wrongly or something. And there's only a limited number of parts that you can create. You know, but I like I like I sort of fell in love with how organic it looks very quickly, you know, and thought, oh, yeah, that's really yeah. cool. I've never seen something look so instantly like I'm looking at a, like I'm really am looking at a bunch of little life forms floating around, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's 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 difficult to 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 see how you know where you go from here, mm. you know. I, I and which is not to say. Because I'm thinking about, obviously, I'm thinking about Game of Life again. You know, what can you do with really, really simple attractors? Yeah. And and I, I don't know whatever you want to call it, like a trans, a transduced transformer. You know, a it transforms A into B. You know. That's right. Yeah. And um, yeah, a converter that converts one molecule type into another, or something like that. Yeah. It's another. Yeah. It's another concept of using building blocks, isn't it? It's 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 once again the idea of going from small to large. Because yeah. the idea is that once you've once you've made one of these organisms, you just drop it into, you drop one of them off next to a little jam jar full of these next to deep water horizon, you know, mm. and then a month mm. later the oil slick's gone, and all that's left is a load of um, neutralized carbon and released hydrogen that comes off yeah. as a harmless yeah. gas, and then the creature. So these creatures, once they've if they don't eat anything for a while, they die and all their bonds break apart and they just they just sort of dissolve, you know. It's like a self-dissolving yeah. organism. And quite, I'm, I, I like that at the moment. That's a really interesting whole field to me, this idea of bioengineering organisms. Like it's very controversial because obviously it's phenomenally risky as well. And I think that might be where some of the game risk comes from, that you, right. could, you could invent an organism like this that will clean up an oil sl slick, but it will also feed on every life form in the entire ocean, <laughs> you know, and then yeah. 20 years in the future, there'll be no fish anywhere in the world as a result of this organism because you fucked it up. You fucked yeah. up the design yeah. to such an extent. So I guess the there's no counter risk at the moment, but there should be a counter risk that you destabilize an ecosystem to such an extent that it's it's destroyed, you know? Because these guys, obviously, they're doubling up. So, um, you know, you've got a classic exponential growth curve with these guys. 
every one of these will double into two in a, in a linear amount of time until there's a until there are a completely unlimited number of them um it's like an algae or a fungus and then once they've run out of food they'll all die out you know and you, you see that Which, same yeah you see exactly that same pattern don't you when you get algae contaminates a lake and it goes completely green and then all yeah, the algae right, yeah. die in a very short period that's right yeah and it's also you know one of the safeguards that they think about and talk about when they're talking about synthetic biology and introducing things you know it will go in it will eat all the oil and then there will be no more oil so it will all die mm. and then it will become you know it will break down and become food for because because it, it is phenomenal that you know like like our, our technology at the moment is is very heavily not biologically based Yes. But the things that the, the the processes that cells can do are, are phenomenally efficient. Yeah. And and just mental, like you say, you know, strangely, we have no... strangely intelligent, aren't they? In the way that they work, well, the, the, the effects yeah. seem very intelligent. Because that was my yeah. first thinking was that it was all going to be done from these guys, right? Little programmable mm. robots. These are like the space bots robots. Yeah. And they would have these chains of resources coming by them, which I thought was quite cool. But how much more interesting is it when they actually have this weird organic you know tendrils and this is all just done like with quite simple attraction and and push away rules and stuff you know it makes, suddenly makes them look alive you know that feeling that conway must have had when he got game of life working on his computer you know mm. suddenly it looks alive yeah. from very simple rules you know i love how i love how alive these things look from very simple rules i think it's kind of cool yeah yeah, yeah. and it, i mean it also feels like a really interesting visualization as well mm. you know for, for something else it almost feels like this is this is once you've done part a in the game yeah the petri dish you is like the press space or, or, or not necessarily you know like you've done something else and then you press space and you and your first one of these is dripped in you know that evolves yeah. according to your kind of genetic code or whatever it is that you've yeah, yeah. created well i think as and well it, there's a lot of scope i mean i only got as far as doing this one scenario um, but you mentioned another interesting one. I mean, COVID didn't exist when I made this, but certainly an airborne, like airborne would have a completely different look. Um, but some sort of blood, uh, some sort of um, bioengineered cure that you inject into somebody, you know? Mm. So you have a cancer patient, you know? And you could you could imagine a, a tumour being a kind of horrendous blob of self-replicating tendrils all kind of swaying mm. in the bloodstream. And you... And so your task is to get rid of it, obviously, to eat it, but not to eat everything around it, not to cause right. any further damage to any organs that have been affected, but also not to allow any bits of it to break away and go into the bloodstream. You know, yeah, that would be another yeah. major, major danger. And so, you know, this is a really fascinating science fiction-y concept about how to cure cancers. Mm, and and mm. if somebody had, you know, or, or um, any other... I imagined I imagined scenarios where you are fixing a broken bone, you know. Yeah. Where there's yeah. like a this 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 view is like a giant thick white chunk running right through right through the middle of this view, you know, and that's an right. Arm, yeah, cross section. And it's shattered yeah. right down the middle, and there's little bits yeah. of bone debris everywhere, right? So all the bits that you need are there, um, and your little organic creature kind of goes in and kind of picks up the bone that's already there, and then sort of moves it into position and kind of shits all over it and glues it in place, you know. Until the, until, and I imagined that you'd end up with a kind of like a lattice-like bone pattern at the end, you know, mm, when the bone mm. was finished, and it would be sort of much stronger than it was before, or something like that, you know. The cynic, well, that's, that's the cynic in me you... saw um, saw some very dark scenarios where you're kind of turning humans into super soldiers and stuff, you know. Yeah. Where yeah. you're sort of going over somebody's bones and, and deliberately making them all lattice-like, so they're way stronger and thicker. Mm -hmm. like Klingonifying, Klingonifying their bone structure, you know, knitting their rib cage so it's solid um, and then knitting like a layer of armor into their outer skin, you know, right, right, and, then, yeah. and then the super soldier would go into combat and then you would have, then you would have the whole trauma side to deal with, like traumatic injuries that needed fixing instantly, you know, because this person's literally in combat right now. And so you would perceive a super soldier, you would perceive bullets actually getting pushed out of their wound. <laughs> and dropping right, right. onto the floor, and what it actually is is ten thousand of your little nano creatures behind the scenes, all pushing at once. You know, pushing the foreign body out. Um, 
I think there's a lot of that's all like high concept thematic stuff that I never really figured out how to systemize to use that term from earlier. You know, yeah, you can see it yeah, breaking apart now. You see, you see the um, see they're running out of they haven't eaten anything for ages, so they're they're slowly dissolving now and they're breaking apart into like their constituent bits. Yeah, yeah, so job's finished. That's it. Yeah, neat, neat concept, don't you think? I do. Yeah, I do, and, and I, I I just think a a beautifully realized potential visualizer you know it just it feels really nice doesn't it mm. you know yeah, it, feel, it feels it feels squishy and organic it's the world of good yeah, concepts and... like they always talked about squishiness you know being very yeah, being inherently yeah. very satisfying and it kind of is i had some other stuff in the game as well um that were more to do with the robots um i had things like this is you'll recognize this this is more so these think of these as like print heads right think of these as three print heads and they need right. to have a stream of molecules fed into them. So what I was thinking was that your robots, wherever they are, you know those robots that we saw earlier with the chains of mm -hmm. resources, these guys, these guys, when they were done, would fly over to your print head like this. You know, <laughs> I'm just dragging this guy in. And they would just feed it in like that, right, into there. Right, and there you go. And now, so now that's now been fed in and is now running through the print head. Um, and if I create a feed line. This is the other thing I made. So these are like a source of resources, right? So this is like a tube of resources that are infinitely available to you in, like a, like a ticker tape, you know, that you can pull on. Okay. Does that makes sense. Yeah. And you can sort of drag these in as well. And if you drag them all together, oh my God, I've made a giant mess of that. Jesus. <laughs> well, it's a prototype. Let me try that again. All right. So if I create a, uh, some print heads over here, and then some feed lines. This is what I was thinking, that you would kind of... This is sort of how you would bioengineer the creature to start with, you know? Like, you feed in raw materials like this, and you see that these print heads sort of knit it all together. You see how they're like now starting okay, to make... Okay. They're, they're yeah, now making, like, higher-level structures. So what they're yeah, really doing yeah. is they're, they're knitting a scarf, basically, which is yeah, completely yeah. useless. But that was kind of how I imagined you would assemble a useful creature, because these things could quite easily have attractors on the edge like this and now it'd be a more sort of synthetic looking um gobbler you know um, mm -hmm. and then you would feed these these resource systems would be fed in from you know whatever these things are but it's just these are all you can see like sometimes in prototypes there are just loads of ideas that you just try stuff you know like oh what if we had this or what if we had that um yeah and, and that was just me trying stuff it's not as cool as the organic stuff but it's still like another part of the game somehow and so what was this one called? Synthetic Gobbler? It's called Nanotech. Oh, Nanotech. Yeah, nanotech. and it's misnamed now because it's it's not really on the nanoscale. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's still a good name, though. I think that's a, that's a good name. I, I haven't really seen a game where you, where you, you know, you, like the idea that you, you start out as maybe some sort of just one little organic machine injected into somebody's arm, you know? And you've got some overall mm -hmm. mission to complete in their bloodstream, or you're or you're dropped into the Atlantic Ocean or something. You know that, that to me is a cool concept. You know, again, it's small from big, isn't it? There you go, nanotech. Brilliant, brilliant. So there you go. Uh, please let us know in the comments why I'm wrong and why this would have been the greatest game that Introversion had ever made. We'd appreciate that. <laughs> Genuinely, that sounded a bit sarcastic. <laughs> we we do love reading your comments. So, I think so you actually do. quite liked this one compared to Mega Processor. Well, no, I mean, again, I, can't, I yeah, I prefer this to Mega Processor, definitely, <laughs> definitely. I'm more interested in this than mm. um, uh, A level electronics, but um, I, I just think I think it looks good. But there's there's no game here, you know. There's there's th this is I I don't know what this is. This is like a an iPad. It's another Lego tool set. Uh, that's what it yeah, is. Yeah, exactly. Like relaxation. But as we but as know. we as we know from YouTube, some people fucking love a yeah, yeah, Lego yeah. tool set. You know. So like we were saying, let us know what you guys think in the comments and head over to introversion.co.uk forward slash prototypes and uh, pick up a copy. Like and subscribe and we will be back at the end of March. Cheerio.